Hi, it's Walter Gigandit here, and I'm here to show you how to harvest a tree. This is a hickory, a young hickory tree, and I'm going to cut it off. It's going to be harvested for a bow stave, and it's the wrong time of year, actually. It's mid-June, so we'll scrape off the sapwood, the first layer of sapwood, because it will be weak. The rest of it is good. Hickory is a good, strong bow, bow wood. I'm going to cut it off flush to the ground. This tree is, as you can see behind me, the trees are way crowded, and this won't hurt the forest to harvest this tree at all. Many of these trees that are behind me will die off because it's just too crowded. It was logged off and there's too many trees. So I'm going to harvest this little hickory and I'll show you with just two cuts. There's going to be one cut at the bottom right here, halfway through, three quarters of the way through, and then back cut it on the other side and let it topple over. And this is only a small tree, a couple inches in diameter, and it's only 15 feet tall. It's not going to fall on me and crush me. What I'm going to teach you to do is make a bow, a long bow, in four days from a piece of green wood, which no one, no one else that I know of teaches this skill. So it's a useful skill. If you don't have a bow and you need one quickly, and all, of you, all you have available is green wood as opposed to seasoned wood, I'm going to teach you how to quick, quickly season the wood and have a bow that has good snap and cast. Okay, here's the tree, of the stump that I've cut off. I cut it off about an inch above ground level. I rake the leaves back out of the way. Cut it off with a bow saw. And now I'm going to just blend it back in. This is how I like to do my work. I'm not leaving a scar in the landscape. And no one even knows that I was here. Here's the bow stave. It's from just about two inches longer than from the ground to my chin. And you're... The, the wise, the little branches that are off of off of your hickory tree, they are incredible for tying stuff. They're just so tough. You can take them. It's one of the few trees that you can do this with. Tie them right in a knot. You can use this for tying your shelter. You can use this for, for tying all manner of stuff. And when this dries, this is just locked right in here. You've got a nice little overhand knot. And it it will hold and hold and hold for, for probably three or four years easily it will hold. Whereas if you're just using natural cordage, it will rot away. This lasts for a long time. The Iroquois people would use this to tie their longhouses together. And that's it. I'm going to show you how to... Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to peel the bark off of your bow stave. Okay. Here's my bow stave. It's relatively straight. Not perfect, but it's pretty good for a bow. This is going to be... The, I'm going to peel the bark off of this. I'll show you how to do that next. I also utilized a, a little bopper stick here. This would be for self-defense. And a throwing stick for hunting. This is from my fingertips about to the middle of my bicep. And then I'll peel the bark off of this. This is a stick that you throw and whop your whatever you need for dinner that night. And next step, I'll show you how to do the take the bark off. Okay, next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this end. I'm going to set my knife. I'm going, to, I'm going to make a cut all the way down here just by tapping using a bopper, using my throw stick for a bopper. I'm just cutting through the, the bark just to the cambium layer of the tree. So just I'm not whacking it in real hard, but this is a part of the wood that's going to come off. I've chosen a part that's got a, a big scar right here, so it doesn't matter. If this, all this wood is going to come right off. So I'm going to go tap this all the way down, and then I'll show you how to take the bark off. Okay, I've, I've tapped down the whole length of the, the bark here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle this underneath the bark. The bark will slip up because it's mid-June right now from when the tree first leaves out until the end of July, the bark will slip right off of it. So I'm going to tap this, working it, working the bark up. You can see it's it's starting to come loose. It's starting to come up. Keep on going and I'll go all the way down to the end. Okay, all I've done is taken a little stick, put a little bit of a wedge on the end, and run this underneath both sides, both sides of the of the bark. And now I'm working it loose. So I'm getting in here and pushing it down. There we go, she's popping right out. There's my peeled bow stave. 
here's a piece of bark. You could um, cut this off and use this for a, a, qu a small quiver for four arrows if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the water and let the inner bark slip off so that I can use that for cordage. And that's what I'm going to do with this part of it. The main part of your stave here, I have to thin this down. It's going to crack if I don't thin it today or bury it underneath the leaves. Those are my two options. I'm going to thin this down and I'll show you two methods to thin this down. It's got to be thinned down to about one inch thick. Okay, next step I'm going to next step I'm going to take down the belly side of my bow. The belly is the side of the bow that faces my belly. That's how I remember belly. <clears throat> this is this is the this will be the side that's under compression. The back of your bow actually faces away from you when you're drawing your arrow. So I'm going to work on the belly side first. <clears throat> I'm going to thin it down. I have a Swedish hatchet. It's a quality it's a forged hatchet and what this long handle on it it's got an extra long handle acts like a cantilever so I'm choking this up right now within two inches of the of the head so I have a lot of a lot of control and this handle does most of the work for me I'm, <clears throat> I'm doing a slicing motion just like if I was using a knife I don't want to chop through my piece of wood I'll start right about midsection I'm gonna thin it out so I'm gonna put little net little nicks in it all the way down shave them off same thing again <clears throat> it's just a this is just this is the motion right here I let it slice in making my cuts between three quarters of an inch and one inch apart is what I try to do. And then shave them off. So there's little work for me to do. The tool does most of the work. Same thing again. And what I'm looking to do is to get this piece of wood down to one inch thick today. One inch thick will keep, if it's an inch thick, it won't get stress cracks in it from drying unevenly. The outside will dry and the center part is soaking wet still. It will make a crack. So it has to be thinned down quickly. Shave them off. Okay, you can see that I've Thin this down with a hatchet. It's not thinned down to one inch yet, but it's relatively on one plane. You just keep on cutting your notches in, and shaving them off. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the, this would be the top side, the, the thicker end I use for my, my bottom limb because it takes more abuse. And you can use a knife. You do it just as, it's going to take you longer, but you can just like the hatchet, you're going to bop her it in. If you don't have a hatchet, this is all you got. You're going to, you can, this, you're going to use your knife, and then you're going to change the angle, and you're going to shave those parts off. This isn't going to be a super quick. The hatchet's way quicker. You're striking straight down on your tip. You're not striking it off to the side. It's a straight down on the, on the hand, on the back of your blade. You want a sturdy knife that has a full tang when you're doing this? That would be your preferred knife. I'm going to do this again. You always start at the hand, what will be the handle of your bow and work down. If you thin the bottom part up, bottom per, part first and work your way up, it starts to get springy. And this, this part, by the time you're all the way up to here, it starts bouncing all over the place. So start at the middle and run down both directions. <clears throat> 